Thank you. Uh, my wife said, you know, Ben, it's really important that you look professional today. So you might want to consider, you know, adding visuals to your talk. Now, I'm not technologically savvy, so I looked it up on the internet and read that slideshows can really help make you look professional. So I made one just for today. Uh, can we see the first slide, please? <laughs> I love my dad. When I was 11 years old, he helped me make a brochure to jumpstart my magic career, complete with descriptive text and photos he had taken of me posing like Harry Houdini, my hero at the time. And, uh, but I should point out that this was 1994, before iPhones or even digital cameras. So my dad was a little surprised when he walked into Wolf Camera and Video and saw the look on the cashier's face, who said, Mr. Whiting, we went through your photos, and we found this one of a small child tied to a fence, <laughs> elaborately. Harry Houdini was an escape artist. And state law requires that we contact Child Protective Services, and we did that. They are here with the police and would like to ask you some questions. <laughs> and it wasn't until that moment my dad realized that he had taken a small child, tied him up elaborately. Oh, by the way, I look nothing like my parents. I was adopted, they are whiter than a picket fence, and I look like this. <laughs> tied him up, photographed it, and got those photos developed. <laughs> Realizing the situation, he explained it all, and the police officer said, that is so far-fetched. We believe you. <laughs> Don't do it again. But I learned a very valuable lesson that day. I learned that if someone understands why you're doing something, and they believe in why you're doing something, they really don't pay that much attention to what you're actually doing. A great lesson for a magician and wannabe mind reader to learn at that age. Uh, if someone had asked my dad, hey, can you just take this random child, tie him up, and photograph it? He would have said no. But he didn't see that circumstance. What he saw was his son, who he loved, chasing a dream. He wanted to encourage that, support that, help any way he could. It just so happens that in this particular instance, helping was also a felony. <laughs> can we see the, uh, the next slide, please? The last time I spoke at TEDx, I said I wanted to share three ways that would help improve connection in your life with other people and tell you one thing you could do to, that you absolutely had to avoid doing if you want to connect with people. The first is, when you're trying to connect with someone, don't focus on the quality of the information you're sharing. Instead, focus on the quality of the questions you are asking. Questions demand engagement. It's something mind readers know very well. And assume you're actually listening and not just waiting for your turn to talk. <laughs> They'll know you care about them. The less you talk, the more you listen, the more people will realize you care. And what I've come to learn over life is people generally don't care what you know until they know that you care about them. And I'm going to take this a step further. When you ask these questions, don't focus on big philosophical or global ideas. Ask questions that are specific to the person you're talking to. Find out what is important to them. Find out their whys. Why do they do the things they do? Why do they, why do they believe the things they believe? You see, there are people in this world who vote for candidates that I don't support. There are people who support causes that I don't believe in. But those are just what's, those are how's. I also know that they have a reason why they do it. My dad should be in jail, <laughs> but if he actually had gone to jail, it would only have been because he loved his son, something we can all empathize with. And the more we ask why, the greater our capacity for empathy. And empathy is a gateway drug to connection. Something else I want to share with you, something I learned as a street performer, showing is always better than telling. 
Imagine a street performer walks up to you on the sidewalk and says, Hi, sir, ma'am, would you and your small child like to come to this shady spot on the sidewalk and watch a magic show? It's really good. It doesn't work. I know because I tried it. However, if you take a solid object and you hold it, and the moment someone looks at you, you make it vanish. They'll stop. And they'll give you one more moment of their time. And a moment is all you need to connect with someone. Show, don't tell. If you love someone, show it. Write them a letter, make a meal together, go on a walk, have a conversation with your cell phones in a different room. If you want to prove to your boss that you're an asset to the company, a greater asset than you already are, don't write a memo, don't tell him. Become a better asset to the company. Take on responsibilities. Do a great job. But here's the kicker. When you do that, do not expect praise. Do not expect rewards. Because the one thing you absolutely have to avoid if you want to connect with someone is your own ego. It was a revelation in my performing career the day I stopped trying to put myself on a pedestal or in a spotlight. I know it's kind of ironic right now with these things in my face. But one day I started bringing people out of the audience and making them the stars of the show, giving them the credit for the magic that I was kind of doing. But I realized that when you bring people out of the audience, you respect them, you don't make fun of them. But when you do that, the people in the audience care about this person. And if I lift them up, we share something. We have something in common. We start to connect. Caring is another gateway drug to connection. So, in summary, don't focus on the information when you want to connect. Focus on your questions. Don't focus on the what's or the how's, but the why's. And remember, showing is always better than telling and leave your ego at home. Uh, one little bonus piece of information, I don't know if it happens to you, but there are times in my life when I feel overwhelmed with my own insecurities, and I feel like I am stuck in my circumstances and the inertia of my own life, and what more often than not can snap me out of that is the ability to laugh at myself, because I'm pretty ridiculous. <laughs> with that in mind, can we see the, uh, the final slide? All right. <laughs> they say a magician is only as good as his audience, and if that's the case, this afternoon I was wonderful. <laughs> TEDx Traverse City, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. I hope to see you soon.